Point three, adopt a spiritual practice that works for you. If you followed our advice uh, for point one, and I hope you did, and you're now cut way, way back, maybe to zero, on your watching of commercial mass media, you are in a way clearing out some space in your mind. And what uh, is going to fill that space? Well, that's where we make a deliberate effort to make sure that the space that's been vacated is filled with positive imagery. Now, this is a very personal matter. Some people find one kind of meditation practice better for them than another. And uh, at Meta, we, you know, we have our own suggestion to make, but uh, we do recognize that uh, it, it's only our personal suggestion. I think it'll work very well for most anybody, but uh, th there's no difficulty at all with your finding a spiritual practice of your own. And when we say a, a spiritual practice, I don't mean a spiritual practice that you make up. I mean finding one on your own. And when we say a spiritual practice, I guess I'm thinking primarily about the ancient practice of meditation, because as Thich Nhat Hanh has pointed out, as Mahatma Gandhi has pointed out, you may believe in nonviolence, but when you go out there and you're facing the, the police dogs and or the people are bearing down on you with lathis or whatever, that nonviolence is going to fly out the window unless you have been strengthening it every single day with a practice of meditation. And as far as I am aware, meditation means uh, willfully, steadily, compassionately, patiently controlling the thought process in your own mind. And you're trying to do two things. You're trying to slow that thought process down, because in fact we've been speeded up greatly by modern conditions. And you're trying to put not only positive but inspiring images in your head. And those two things work very well together. When you think negative thoughts, your mind speeds up. When your mind speeds up, you tend to think negative thoughts. Conversely, when you have something inspiring, an image of a great human being or a profound piece of wisdom in your mind, your mind will slow down and you will tend at a very deep level to concentrate on that beautiful message. So we find that the practice called passage meditation, which you can find out about on a website called www.eshwaran.org, E-A-S as in Sam, W-A-R-A-N.org, is one that we can recommend in full confidence. But I say again that uh, different people find different things helpful for them. What you want to do is find a practice which slowly brings your own mind under control, and you have to do this yourself. We're not talking here about hypnotism or making your making yourself unnecessarily vulnerable to others. If you're looking around for a spiritual practice, one criterion that you can use is plausibility. You know, back in the old days in Berkeley, I remember every imaginable thing was going on and there was even something called chaotic meditation. Well, what you're trying to accomplish in meditation is the exact opposite of chaos. So that was on the surface already not a good idea. Secondly, if there's a teacher, and we do find, incidentally, that a teacher, living or otherwise, is just about indispensable. If there's a teacher, what did she or he live like? Did they run right around in a Rolls Royce, and did they have armed bodyguards, and do they have all kinds of uh, dubious habits? Or were they simple, sincere, genuine human beings who didn't need you for anything, but just wanted to help? That's the second criterion. And the third is, you know, look at the followers. If there's, you know, thousands of people who've been doing practice X, Y, or Z, look at and see what's happened to them in the course of some years. Uh, and then the fourth and final and most important criterion is to go ahead and give it a try. But it is uh, very helpful not to jump from practice to practice. If you find one that looks like it could work for you, give yourself to it, give yourself a period of time to see what it feels like. It's not going to feel like a lot of fun, but at the end you'll look back and say, okay, I used to be um, 
addicted to chewing gum. And you know what? I haven't thought about chewing gum for five straight days. Something is going on here. So your own experiences uh, are going to be the final criterion and, and in everything that we have to suggest here. It is about developing your own sensitivity and your own responsibility. So that's what we would recommend. Passage meditation is taught by the Blue Mountain Center of Meditation at ishran.org or some other practice which can really enable you to fill your mind with inspiring, uplifting thoughts and images and get some of your more undesired impulses under control. Thank you.